Thank you very much. Chair. The chair of this very important meeting here this, this afternoon, Ms. Willetta Wilson, Anthony Rampasad, project manager of the Trinidad and Tobago Scrap Iron Dealers, and our very own Sati Gajada Innes, the interim chair of the Joint Trade Union Movements uh, Women, Ms. Terry Inns of Working Women for Social Progress, and I'm advised that she, is, she will be on the virtual platform. Our comrade David Abdullah, the political leader of the movement for social justice, and of course, the host of this very important meeting and discussion here this afternoon, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Alan Ferguson, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Scrap Iron Dealers. Comrades all present here, and all who are listening or viewing us on social media and the social platforms, social media platforms here this afternoon, a very pleasant Sunday afternoon. Let me first start by saying that I am happy to be in the company of a number of persons here this afternoon, including those who are paying attention to what has been said here, because what it signals to me is that despite what they say, and there are many of them who propagate the contrary, despite what they say, there are still a significant number of people who would want to see a better Trinidad and Tobago. And your presence here this afternoon signal that you would have committed your time towards achieving that outcome. Let me also say immediately that that is not an easy task in this Banana Republic, Trinidad and Tobago today. That they have loaded a million times full the propaganda against those who want to correct the ills that they commit, it is not an easy task. And bear with me for just a moment here, while I spend a few minutes at the podium touching on a, a few issues. Trinidad and Tobago, comrades, brothers and sisters, citizens, in case you did not know it or understand it, Trinidad and Tobago today is in deep crisis. And that crisis was not brought on by COVID. Let us not be fooled into believing the propaganda that they sprout that it is because of COVID. Long before COVID-19 hit the shores of Trinidad and Tobago, our country was in crisis. COVID exposed a number of weaknesses and it exposed a number of corrupt areas within the crisis, and of course, it exacerbated the crisis. But let me go on. That you have a crisis with respect to COVID, and a number of persons, citizens, are dying on a daily basis. A number, a significant number of our citizens are in the hospital. You have a crisis in the health sector. You have a crisis with respect to, and the uh, project manager made the point, with respect to crime and violence, that which is not reported, there's a crisis there. You have a crisis on the labor landscape with many, many thousands of workers losing their jobs and many, many more lost their jobs today with many more to lose their jobs tomorrow and in the coming weeks and months ahead. And so, you have many crises. But the one crisis I think 
may have escaped the attention of all, which is overarching and which is driving all of those crises, is that we have a crisis in governance in this country. That those who applied for and in fact got the job, they have fallen down on the job for quite a while. And as a result of that falling down on the job, it has resulted in the manifestation in many ways, including those which I have already described. And so if for one reason or another, you are seeing without the bat of an eyelid and with the full support of the Minister of Finance and their Prime Minister, and no attention at all is being paid to the many thousands of workers who lose their jobs. That is a, a part of the crisis in governance. They just don't care. If, for instance, the problem that you experience with the, your association, Trinidad and Tobago Scrap Iron Dealers, where they are now taking advantage and diverting all of the resources to where? that belong to the 99% to 1%. That is a part of the crisis. And if tonight you are afraid to walk the streets and I dare say that we ought to be afraid because criminals are roaming free because of their incapacity to deal with that issue, that is another part of the crisis. And how do we address all of these crises? I think I am heartened when I see groups like ours and yours and others coming together. Because you know what? Their strength comes from dividing us. If they can get you to believe or everybody to believe that, listen, is every man for himself or every woman for themselves. And therefore, you should be against the trade union movement and vice versa. Them fellas only out for the self or put us against you and we don't understand the setup that we are in, we will continue to fight among ourselves and they will be laughing all the way to the bank and they will be laughing all the way anyway. And so, and so you pay attention to what has been said in the budget. The biggest ruse in recent time on this country Bright picture when in fact the reality is different. I want to say this afternoon that we stand vindicated in the trade union movement because we would have predicted that we were going to get all of these increase, all of these increases in the budget, and in fact it happened. And no matter how much they whine and dine and whine low to the ground because they reduced the VAT and pigtail, we saw that on social media. The fact of the matter is that people catching hell in this country. People can't see their way in this country. But you know what? The people who are responsible for that, who have fallen down on the job, they just don't care. Because what? They are okay. And they are okay to give away the resources to their friends. You pay attention to the, the commentary just recently, but it may have been yesterday, on the newspaper about IMF, and they would rate that up. Eh? IMF give them what, a good score. They're boasting about that. But if you have an, an international organization, the nature of which we know IMF to be, giving them good ratings in a time when people are suffering, you've got to check yourself and examine that. IMF is not about enriching or improving the lives of ordinary people, you know. They are just about statistics and figures and so on. Balancing your book, they don't care what you do to get that. So when IMF tell them that they are on the right track, here's what they're on the right track for. Thousands of workers gone home. High prices in the groceries with prices rising. Inability to deal with crime and criminal activity. All of the social services collapse. Hospital in a mess. The numbers of persons dying as a result of the uh, COVID-19 is keep rising. And of course, of course, their general inability to manage the country. And that is what IMF give them 
a green light for. While on the other hand, another international rating agency, Moody's, say they would have been downgraded. So who is to believe? What we know, comrades, is that we are suffering on the ground. Regardless of what they say there, we, ordinary people, are catching hell in Trinidad and Tobago. And so it is as though we are serving a five-year hard labor term, you know. Five years hard labor, one year, one year gone. With four more years hard labor, with no chance of parole. None at all. And so it falls to us to respond. But as I talk about that crisis, that crisis in governance, if we are not careful, we will end up with another crisis, and that is the crisis of our being somewhat in a state of paralysis. And I'm talking not now about us here, but generally. That all of these things are happening, but the response is not what it's supposed to be as yet. I'm impatient where that is concerned. Because every day that passes, and these people continue to perpetrate injustice against the people of this country, it's another day that thousands and thousands of us continue to suffer. Do you know why we are today not under an SOE? And I don't care who say it. I have no problem if somebody says the right thing yesterday for me to underline it today. And if somebody says the wrong thing yesterday, I will also say that I believe it's the wrong thing. So this statement I'm about to make, I don't care who say it. But I think that it is correct because that's the position that we have held for quite a while in the trade union movement, in JTAM in particular. And that is, you know why we are not under lockdown today, Sunday, that they would have lifted the SOE earlier this week? You know why? It is for the convenience of Keith Rowley and the PNM's election in Tobago. That's the only reason. Now let me backpack a bit, backtrack. You know why we had the SOE extended? It is for them to continue to continue to take advantage of the citizens under the umbrella, under the umbit of COVID. And so you had an anti-people, anti-worker budget, and that people were expected in a normal situation to protest. But you can't protest because you're under a state of emergency. They extended that. But when they fall, they fell into their own trap and realized that it's days coming for that election and they cannot campaign legally, ups come they, they lift the state of emergency. But let me tell you this. Take warning now that right after that, not too long after, it may be week, a week or a month, they're coming back with this state of emergency on the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Because right after that election, prices are going to continue to go spiraling high. Right after that election, they, they're trying to hold it down now, the price of fuel is going to be introduced at the pump. How many of us recognize that they have not adjusted it as yet at the pumps, even though they would have announced it in the budget? The only reason why they didn't do that as yet is because of election. Everything is geared to election to acquire more power to use that power against the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. So they come in with all of that, but they're timing it well. I wanted to tell Trinidad and Tobago through this medium, and of course to, uh, to tell you two, that it is around election time they would come with all kinds of fancy promises that which will not be fulfilled. We are with someone who asks for a job, but you can't trust the person who asks for the job. We are with someone who begs for the job up and down this country, but that person is the most arrogant person against the people who give him the job. Could you imagine that? And I'm not, I, if I mash any corns here this afternoon, I'm sorry, but I, my job is about mashing corns in the interest of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We cannot have it both ways, comrades. We cannot identify the same people who are against us every day and then hug them up on the one hand. It's either we for the cause for a better Trinidad and Tobago or we are against it. But if we are for the cause for a better Trinidad and Tobago, that cause does not include the People's National Movement and Keith Rowley. 
<laughs> you think about it. There's no way that this country, in fact, let me just say that that PNM, this PNM is different from any PNM that we have ever experienced. And the great Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, the vision he had for Trinidad and Tobago, the vision he had with the inception when, and the birth of PNM and through independence and so on, for the citizens of this country, Eric Williams will be turning in his grave. In fact, he'll be rotating at probably two, three thousand revs per minute in his grave because that was not the Trinidad and Tobago he envisaged. We have thousands of workers going home. Crime out of control. Health in shambles and the leader couldn't care less. That is not the Trinidad and Tobago he envisaged. So forgive me, all the friends of that fella, who know, and he really had no friend eh? when it comes to him. The only friends he have, they reside in the one percent. Don't fool yourself. If you're from the 99 percent, you and Keith Rowley are no real friend. In fact, if he's your friend, if you're his friend, he's not your friend. So I am saying, comrades, here this afternoon, that we have a choice. We always have a choice. The only choice we don't have, two choices that you do not have, is to born and to die. None of us here made the choice for us to be here, to be born. And of course, you have no choice when the time comes, you're going to have to die. But you see, between your birth and death, you have many choices. And I want to suggest here this afternoon that the choice we must make is to identify with all of the suffering communities throughout this country, having them understand the problems that they're experiencing. The problems they're experiencing is not, has nothing to do, it has, yes, COVID compounded it, but it has a lot to do, in fact, all to do with who's in charge and the measures that they are imposing on Trinidad and Tobago, the measures that they are unleashing on Trinidad and Tobago. And if we are to get a better deal, a fair share, a fair shake, a fair piece of the pie, because that is all we're asking for, you know. That is all you ask for. That is all we ask for in the trade union movement. We don't want more, but we don't want less. We want what is our just entitlement. But you see, when they fail, when they fail to be able to manage the economy, and I did mention what Moody said in spite of what IMF said. When they fail and they have less revenue to go around, who do you think will suffer? It's not the 1%. They're making more money right now. Not the banks, they're declaring profits right now in this pandemic. It is us ordinary people will have to suffer. And so they will choke you choke you to get blood out of stone to make up for the difference. And that is why they will come with all kinds of measures, including property tax. And let's uh, remind ourselves as I close here, because I am happy that they were cornered, that they had to release this state of emergency, because we in the trade union movement were waiting with bated breath to be able to take to the streets. Because all over the world, when in, where injustice is perpetrated on citizens, they take to the streets. And therefore, we are happy and we'll take advantage of this window of an opportunity to take to the streets, to, to educate the citizens, and to mobilize, because that is where the response will come from. Because it's going to get more difficult. Because as their revenue fall to be able to balance their books to satisfy IMF, they will come with all kinds of increased taxation and so on. So we are going to be facing increased electricity rates. We are going to be facing increased water rates that started already. We are going to, yes, property tax. And all of those things at a time where the citizens can least afford. If there was ever a worse time for those things, it's now. My IMF don't care about that. Keith Rowley don't care, and the short midget don't care. Um, Colm Imbo don't care about that. No. That is not their concern. So, the citizens now are asked to, by the 30th of this month, every citizen flout 
a comprehensive document relating to property tax. And if you don't respond, here's what's going to happen to you. They are going to find those people who didn't respond $5,000. $5,000 hard earned dollars in this pandemic. You tell me that these people are right in the head. And you are asked to do the job of those who are supposed to be employed to do that job. You are now asked to do that job. So it's like if it's like what is happening at the gas station. You go to the gas station and you now, without even knowing it, took away a job because you fill in your own gas. Somebody supposed to do that, that person would have been paid to do that. You take away that job because you, I don't full know, if there's any filling station where I have to go to the pump and pump my own gas, that is not a filling station for me. I'm a union representative, I represent workers. I can't take away the job. And we will come to the point where you'll go to all of those fast foods, the bigger outlets, and you've got to serve yourself, but still pay. You take away another person's job. Just think about it. And in this regard, where there's an opportunity, if they want to deal with the backlog, they can employ, if even for a temporary period of time, a number of our young persons to do this job, they're asking citizens to do it. So you are now to fill out a comprehensive document and if you make a mistake on that document, you know what happened? If you make a mistake on that document, that document carries a declaration. You know what that declaration is? You declare to be true and correct and so on. And if you make a mistake, you are liable to be fined. And so on now it is section 32 of the Valuation of Land Act. You can be fined. It's a criminal offense to, one, make a false or a bad declaration, or, of course, not fill out that form at all. If we were conscious in Trinidad and Tobago, understanding the pain and suffering and hurt that these people are inflicting upon us, understanding who are for us and who are against us, if we were at a level of consciousness, by that date, the 30th of November, Every single citizen in this country would have lined up at the valuation division and dumped that form for them. But that is not where we are right now, unfortunately. And so mine is the responsibility to tell you the problem, point you to the solution. Tell you the problem, who for you, tell you who against you. And invite all of us to embark on a journey for a better Trinidad and Tobago. And I congratulate the comrades on this initiative, Drive for Progress. We understand why we, they would not have given, despite what they say, we understand why they would not have given permission. We understand why they are preparing right now to deny us permission to hit the streets. We understand all of that. Because what they want, what they want any day, any time, is a police commissioner that will do their bidding. That is what they want. And that is the dictatorship that we are under. But we will respond to that. But may I just say in closing that it is a good initiative that this particular forum that gave me the opportunity, long time I want to talk, but they're holding down the thing, gave me the opportunity to speak that we must have many more of these that the drive for progress, that journey must continue. That that drive must be a drive within us, within our, our bosom, within our bellies, that drive for a better Trinidad and Tobago. Because Trinidad and Tobago has long run off the road. We are off the road. We are down a steep hill, pell-mell, no brakes, no steering, and we blindfold, and of course, we can't even talk. You can't even call for help because you have on mask now. Trinidad and Tobago is heading for a major crash. And if we are to come back on the road to progress, if we are to continue with the drive to progress, let us invite all like-minded, all of those, let's get them on board and let us drive towards achieving a better Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much.